But what we're doing now, a draft of the most important non-quarterbacks for Wild Card Weekend. Chris has the trivia question for me. If I get it right, I get the first pick. When I get it wrong, he'll get the first pick. Yep, my man Mike Keith on the on the call down there in Tennessee um, with the exuberant touchdown Titans. All right, here we go. Heisman Trophy winner Derek Henry led the league in rushing yards, as you know, 1,540 yards, okay? Who, I repeat, who was the last Heisman Trophy winner to win the rushing title? Michael James Florio. Wow. Whoa. OJ Simpson. What? You went that far back? Really? You're just going to go back? I figured back? it was a trick <laughs> like that. Nope. All you just look at my school. What school did I go to? Oh, oh, Ricky Williams. Yep. Good old Ricky, Ricky Williams. Williams. 2002 uh, with the Miami Dolphins, I believe. At He's that disqualified. Point. He's disqualified. Why? Yeah. Ugh. I'm kidding. Okay. For, for for the reason you'd be disqualified. <laughs> yes. He, we would both be disqualified for those reasons. <laughs> you You're get, right. You get, you get right. the first pick. All right. Here we go. Um, <laughs> You know, it's it's really it's uh, I don't you know I don't like to be captain obvious here with this one, but Derrick Henry is the, probably the guy I'm going to pick number one. I mean, I am he is the guy I am picking number one because he is the m- most important non quarterback, you know, and maybe any game this whole weekend. I mean, that's arguable. Arguable, I understand that, but we know Tennessee tough task of going up to New England, winning that football game. If New England is susceptible in some areas, it is that I think you can overpower them. They lack big people on their defensive front, uh, which is unusual for them. But if Tennessee and Derrick Henry can run the ball, man, that is going to put the Patriots in some sort of bind. And of course, Ryan Tannehill and what they can do off a play action pass will become that much more dangerous. They'll be able to control the clock, do everything like that. So I go with Derrick Henry. No, Bill Belichick, the coach of the Patriots, was asked this week, how do you go about simulating Derrick Henry in practice? And he said, you can't. It's impossible. And uh, good luck getting ready to face Derrick Henry when he's healthy. He is as effective as any running back in the NFL. It's amazing he isn't a bigger star than he is. Yeah. And maybe it's because he plays for the Titans and right. not for a marquee team. I mean, think about it. If he played for the Cowboys, if he played for the Patriots, the Packers, the Steelers, his jersey would be everywhere. And uh, we'll see where he plays in the future because I think the Titans are going to have to do what they can to keep him around if it means using the franchise tag. All right, for me, i got to go Dalvin Cook. We talked about the Viking Saints game last segment. And... If Dalvin Cook can run the ball, the Vikings have a chance to keep it close. If he cannot get off the blocks, if he cannot push the pile, if he can't dart through those openings in that zone blocking scheme that Gary Kubiak and Kevin Stefanski use in Minnesota, the Vikings have no chance. If they're forced to be one-dimensional passing the ball, they're dead. So Dalvin Cook is going to be key, not to winning, but to having a snowball's chance in hell at staying within a score. And if that happens, there is a chance the Vikings could stun the Saints. But it's only going to be a chance if Dalvin Cook is able to run like we've seen him run on his good running days all year long. Yeah, 100%. I hear you. I think it's the only chance. Exactly right. I mean, I, I, I feel like they gotta. he's got to have a successful day just for them to keep that game close is the way I feel about it almost. So... I'm with you. Um, He has got to be special, and he has been special when healthy, and we'll see how that Vikings O-line does against that Saints D-line, which is uh, the real deal Holyfield. All right. um, I think I'm going to have to go with Zach Ertz here for my second pick. You know, I look at Zach Ertz. I know he's coming off a rib injury, right? It sounds like he's good to go for the the matchup this weekend against the Seattle Seahawks. There's lack of weapons with the Philadelphia Eagles right now. I mean, we know that their receivers are, you know, who the hell knows their names. Okay. And now Miles Sanders is banged up as well on the offensive side of the ball at the running back position. I just think that means they're going to have to find more and more ways to use Zach Ertz in the middle of the field. He had a pretty good day the first time around against the Seattle Seahawks. I want to say he had like north of 10 catches and stats. Maybe you can look up that, look me that up uh, real quick. But I do think that'll be an important part of this game. Philadelphia is going to have to run the ball a little bit, little play actions, working Zach Ertz over the middle. The Seahawks can be over aggressive, stopping the run at times, which can let, lend them to get burned uh, you know, behind their linebackers. And I was right. It was 12 catches first time around. Zach Ertz is my second round pick. He was limited in practice on Wednesday with that rib injury. I think I saw Coach Doug Peterson say that he has yet to be cleared for contact. 
Uh, but you know, look, th- this is the playoffs. This is single elimination round, and uh, you know I expect there, there, to be there. Th- th- there is there is a very real risk when you have a rib injury that you know it breaks off and causes all sorts of damage to your internal organs. But I don't know that that's going to be part of the problem for Ertz. Uh, but but he is critical to this. If it's not him, Dallas Goddard's a guy who's going to have to step up, and we saw Goddard step up. I think that causes me and I want to push a little bit here I don't think Ertz is as important as you think because I think Goddard can get it done but when there are so many guys who are banged up for the Eagles every guy who can suit up and play helps I am going to go now with uh, the first game of the weekend the Houston Texans memorial playoff game involving the Houston Texans every year J.J. Watt's back and if if the if the Texans are going to win this game, JJ Watt needs to. Re- it can't just be he's a decoy. It can't just be he needs a week or two to work himself back into action. He's got to come out and he's got to be the JJ Watt of old. So you're playing that that implies you're fine. So you better come out and play like you're fine, and you better play well because the Texans are going to need it if they're going to put together the kind of effort, total team effort required to take down a very dangerous Bills team. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I was thinking about doing somebody along the the Texans defense too. I couldn't, you know, I actually was going to think about Romeo Cornell just because, hey, this Texans defense, it's all over the place all year long. Uh, but you're right. They need J.J. Watt not only as a pass rush presence, pass rush presence uh, but, you know, be, because the, the Texans pass defense, it's one of the worst in football. And they need somebody to rush the quarterback so they don't have to compromise themselves of blitzing and pressuring all the time to try to make that happen. That's a big issue, and uh, that's one of the things I'm interested in that matchup. Can that Bills offense consistently move the ball in that Texans defense, which has been very spotty at best this year? Um, So good pick by you there. I'm not mad at you. Um, Let's see. My third-round pick, I'm not sure who I want to – you know what? I think I'm going to go with N. Keel Harry, okay, up in New England. Because New England, who's going to step up on that offense? Who is it going to be? We know they want to get the ball to Julian Edelman, but so does Mike Vrabel and Dean Pease. They know that too. And I would be thinking that they're going to steal some of what they saw the Houston Texans and Kansas City Chiefs do to the New England Patriots, which is in big situations, they doubled Julian Edelman. They said, Prove to me you can beat me with somebody else. I feel like Nkeel Harry is very close to becoming that next guy in that offense. He's, you know, just getting into shape, missing so much of the year. But uh, New England needs that other viable weapon in the pass game other than Edelman. And I think Nikhil Harry could be that guy, especially this week with the Titans, which don't have a great pass defense. They let up a lot of big plays, too. He might get some favorable looks to where Brady wants to work him. He's got size, and he can do something with the ball in his hand. So I look at him to be a weapon this weekend, Mike. Yeah, and, you know, it's uh, – Who's it going to be? It's, it's got to be somebody else. It's a harsh reminder for the Patriots that they could have had A.J. Brown and they took and kill Harry. And I'm going to stick with that game yeah. because I'm flipping it over yeah. to the guy that's going to cover A.J. Yeah, Brown. Yeah, I hear you. Because he got picked on last week, right. and it was not pretty when the Dolphins repeatedly targeted Devontae Parker, who was being covered by Stephon Gilmore. Can Stephon Gilmore take some of the steam out of A.J. Brown, right? Because if the Titans start running the ball effectively with Derrick Henry, the passing game should, in theory, open up. And A.J. Brown has been spectacular this year. Both he and D.K. Metcalf came from the University of Mississippi, and for a while their stats were almost identical. identical. A.J. Brown identical A.J. Brown ended up being the better guy this year and he's had the moments he's had those like big plays that we we see in the highlights on Football Night in America and it's like my god this guy's a man among boys can Stephon Gilmore slow him down because it could be that the Patriots sell out to stop Derrick Henry and they say hey Stephon you handle A.J. Brown and if he handles him the way he handled Devontae Parker Stephon Gilmore is the one who's going to be getting handled yeah that that's what's scary it is because uh, last week you're I mean, you know, we watched it together. It wasn't like Gilmore was in bad pass coverage, but it was just a quarterback who was on fire against a really talented receiver. And they just said, you know, the perfect throw and a freaky athlete at receiver. It's just tough to stop. I don't care who you are. And that's what you worry about right now. Because, you know, you and I, every Sunday, we sit there every week and go, Tannehill to A.J. Brown, holy cow. I mean, it's becoming one of the marquee combinations in the sport. So I'm with you. That's why I was saying a little earlier in the week, Mike, like, If I'm New England, 
I don't know on some of those second downs, I might double A.J. Brown and then say, hey, Stephon Gilmore, go cover Corey Davis on the other side and you handle him. But let's just take let's take A.J. Brown and Ryan Tannehill's thought process like pre-snap to where he's like, oh, no, I don't have my guy. I got to go somewhere else. Uh, that, that would be something I would think about if I'm the Patriots. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.